We have all the regulations. The Europeans have banned a number of, mm. in fact, all of these products are either banned or not yet approved. Of the five, we have, they do not allow hormones to be used in increasing meat production. They do not allow antibiotics to in increase weight yeah. in animals. They do not allow slaughterhouse waste to be fed to any animals. All of these products are allowed to be fed or injected in Canada to food producing animals. No. They have never been tested. They have never been proven to be safe. Now Canada, like many other countries, relies on a lot of food importation. We can have all these regulations here in Canada, which we're not even applying. Do we have any protection as to what's really going into the food that's coming into this country every day? Well, the, uh, uh, in fact, if Canada wants, uh, as the food comes, Canada can say, no, if you're using hormones, we're not going to allow that in. We'll test it. If you allow uh, the same thing for antibiotics, same thing, any product, then honey coming from China, we again break our own rules. We say that honey coming from China, if we have only 5% Canadian honey in it, we call it Canadian. So it's again favoring these companies to bring food from abroad, but we don't know that the Chinese may be using banned antibiotics, and they are using them in producing honey, because the honeycombs get infected, and they're using certain antibiotics which are banned in Canada, certain chemicals which are banned in Canada. But for the reasons of trade, the, our government lets it go through. So, at this point, I'm personally afraid to eat almost anything that, that, that we buy at the stores here. What can consumers do to try and best protect themselves when they're going to buy food in their grocery stores or wherever they buy food? That's not where it's going to change things. People now have to say, to the governments. We want you to apply these rules. Those laws were passed on our behalf. The Food and Drugs Act took many years, now almost, uh, it was uh, revised in 67. We want you to apply that law strictly as written. If not, then uh, uh, people can take action, people can sue the government, people can sue the parliament. All these uh, laws are available to Canadians people have to demand that law be applied. And not just say the government will take care of it or we can't do it. Government has no choice. Because the law is attached to the criminal code. A company or a government official or a politician, whoever breaks, breaks the law, they can go to jail. Now, your book is called Corrupt to the Core, Memoirs of a Health Canada, Canada Whistleblower. whistleblower. What triggered you to be a whistleblower when 99 out of 100 people would never even consider blowing a whistle, never mind doing it? You know, the word whistleblower you will not find in the dictionary. It's a term that comes uh, from um, sports. There's an umpire. If somebody plays foul, he blows the whistle and says, stop, I'll give you a red card, yellow card, or, or remove the whole team, whatever happens. There's violence on the field and they break the rules, they're playing foul, they're not allowed. Or a policeman blows the whistle and he sees a crime being committed, he says, stop, and I'm going to charge you now. If on that scene, somebody comes and says to the policeman, don't issue a ticket, don't charge this person because he's related to such and such minister or such and such official or some influential person, now for the same one crime, there are three 